few months, I've been working on a couple of different zine projects, and I wanted to talk about the process of making them here, and maybe hopefully also inspire you to make your own. After going through the photos in my archive, I realized that I could organize my photos into four different thematic categories. Photos of people in isolation, photos of pairs of people, landscape photos, and photos of liminal spaces. A theme is an overarching or recurring concept or idea that ties a piece of work together. Theo Crawford also has a great video where he talks about using themes in photography. When I try to come up with a theme for a zine, I usually think of a word or a phrase that I want to build the zine around. I find that writing descriptions about my photos helps me better understand the mood and atmosphere that I was trying to capture while taking the photo. I also list out nouns, verbs, and adjectives that are common to the body of photos. Tia Weiss has a great video where she describes five different sequencing methods. I have linked her video in the description. I personally gravitate more towards using the essay method, where the photos that I choose to include in a zine are meant to support a concept, such as the concept of loneliness or the concept of liminality. But when I sequence images and clips for a YouTube video, I would use more of a chronological and narrative type of sequencing, where I try to build a rough story of someone traveling to different places over the course of a day. So in some of my past videos, I would sometimes start with a morning clip and then end with a clip in the evening to signal the passage of time. Or sometimes I start with a clip of me entering the city and then me leaving the city, even though clips weren't actually filmed in that order. There's no right or wrong way to sequence images. You can sequence your images in a very obvious manner, like by similar colors or by repeated imagery or motifs, or you can pair images together by a similar theme or idea. The order in which you present your images will determine the emotional flow and impact of your zine. Which images you pair together will suggest or imply a certain idea or story to the viewer. In Justina Curlin's Highway Kind, there's one instance where she paired an image of a severed car door with no window pane with an image of shattered glass on the ground. It's implied that these two images complete each other, even though we don't know whether the glass on the ground actually belongs to the missing window on the car door. In another example, she paired an image of an actual train moving through the landscape with an image of a child playing with a toy train set, which I think is a very poetic way of saying that art imitates life and how we imitate grown-up things when we're young. In Stephen Shore's survey, there are images that are paired by similar colors, like the peeling mustard yellow of the lamp with the mustard yellow of the table. In other pairings, he'd contrast two different ideas, like this one where there's a claustrophobic shot of a knitted towel or rug or some kind of foot mat on the floor, and it's contrasted by this image of the vast blue natural sky outside. Once you've determined your photo sequence, there are several options for how to put your images together into a PDF. I use MagCloud because of how straightforward the process is. On the website, they provide you with templates you can download for Microsoft Word or InDesign. Once you download the template for whichever zine format you want, all you have to do is upload your images into the template. Unfortunately, the Word document for your zine that you create for MagCloud isn't transferable to other services like Mixum or Blurb because the sizes and bleed margins are a bit different between printing companies. Although Blurb now owns MagCloud, the two companies serve slightly different purposes. Both are print-on-demand drop shipping services, but Blurb is more of a photo book company that allows authors to also self-publish novels. So if you want to print a really professional looking hardcover or softcover photo book with a choice of really high quality pearly photo paper, and you want the option of having an ISBN, then Blurb might be a good option. MagCloud, on the other hand, specializes more in printing flyers and zines, so MagCloud is a more affordable option than Blurb if you're looking to mass print. They also have more options for sizing and binding. The only downside about MagCloud would be that you can't choose the type of paper that you want to print your zine on. MagCloud publications are printed on 80 pound text stock. I find that the colors are pretty true to life, vibrant, sharp, and glossy. A general lesson that I learned from printing my work was that the colors tend to print a bit darker than what you see on your computer screen. So after seeing this happen on my first print run, I had to go back to lift the shadows a bit on the images and then reorder a second round of proofs. Now that I've gone over the technical process of putting together a zine, I'll now go over the creative process of how I came up with the four zines that I made. 
The first zine is photos of single people or photos of isolated individuals in the city. I wanted to use Mavericks as an ironic title. We tend to think of Mavericks as being eccentric, unorthodox, daring people, but we don't often think of ourselves as being Mavericks, even though we all have unique and interesting lives and personalities. I wanted the scene to challenge the traditional idea of the Maverick by presenting these unassuming strangers as Mavericks, even though they aren't doing anything particularly out of the ordinary. I chose this image of people in a coffee shop as the cover because the earthy tones were reminiscent of the vibes that old lifestyle or fashion magazines had. The photo on the back just felt like a natural back cover image with the man sitting on the side and the hang lights mimicking the layout of end credits that you'd see at the end of a movie. The second zine is meant to complement the first one. It's a zine of paired individuals. I titled the zine Symbiosis to reflect the interdependent relationship that we can have with another person. The zine has 24 images and it shows different possible interactional dynamics between two people. The cover is a wraparound image, and it's an image that I took when I first started film photography, so it means a lot to me. I took it on an early Friday evening in November a couple years ago. I was passing through Toronto's High Park, and the usually busy park was empty at the time, except for this couple standing by the pond. The sun was beginning to set, which cast a glow halo around them and the shrubs in the park. It felt like no one else in the world existed except for them. The third zine is a compilation of landscape images, and it's a bit more of a personal zine, despite not featuring anything overtly personal. And unlike the first two zines, which were collections of images taken on film, the zine is a mix of film and digital images. I called the zine anti-narratives, because I wanted to call into question what narratives are and whether single images could be considered narratives, specifically landscape photography, which doesn't even contain people. A lot of people say that you could try to tell a story with your images. But can you really tell a full story with a single image? You can show a brief single moment from a story, you can hint at a story, and you can play a potential story, but we tend to conflate these things with storytelling. I think that you begin to tell comprehensive stories when you put several images together because you are building and connecting events by doing so. After all, that's what movies are, a series of images. Another message that I wanted to convey with the scene is self-identity. How could I express self-identity through something as general and depersonalized as landscapes? Over the years, I've taken landscapes while I was traveling through the States and through Europe, some while I was traveling through Asia, visiting my parents' childhood home, and some close to the home where I grew up here near Toronto. So I decided to split the scene into three sections. Landscapes I took in the East, landscapes I took in the West, and landscapes taken around home. It's kind of like a self-portrait through landscapes, although I did bend my own rules a bit in the scene because I did include some vague pictures of people in the distance or pictures that imply the presence of people, but overall this zine is about capturing the environment around me. Compositionally, I found the square format to be really fun to work with because you can have images that span across the two pages. The fourth scene is much bigger and longer than the other three. It's a letter-sized magazine and has 96 pages. I titled the scene Liminal because a common pattern in my photography is that I try to capture liminal moods. Liminality is kind of like the feeling of being in limbo. Things feel a little off, a little lonely, a little eerie, and a little uncanny, kind of like you're between dimensions. After making the scene, I came across a video by Clark Eliason where he talks about what liminal spaces are. People often associate liminality with an unsettling feeling, but I think that liminality can sometimes be a positive feeling, like nostalgia, where you're remembering an old home or an old friend. Like the anti-narrative zine, this zine is also a mix of film and digital photos. It's also split into sections. I have four chapters describing four different types of liminal spaces, urban spaces, nostalgic spaces, languid spaces, and mystic spaces. The cover is a shot of Montreal's Olympic Stadium and Tower taken during twilight hour. A lot of people have mixed feelings about the design of the structure, but I personally like the brutalist and vaguely dystopian style. The empty walkway leading up to the stadium feels ominous, and the tower looks like a futuristic signaling beacon with its purple glow, while the dome looks vaguely like a spaceship. It fit the liminal vibe and theme that I was looking for to tie the zine together. I printed a magazine version and a digest version of the zine. The digest version is cuter and more compact to hold, but it also feels more like a book because of how many pages it has. 
In the end, I went with magazine version since the images are larger and you can see more details in the photos. Despite being half the size of the magazine, the printing cost of the digest is only 20% less, which means that the cost of the digest version is actually quite close to that of the magazine version, and so I thought the magazine is a more cost-effective option since you get images that are twice as big but at a very similar price point. MagCloud also explains this on their website. I always had the impression that making a zine was a specific milestone project that you can only do once you've reached a certain point in your photography journey, or once you've accumulated a large enough body of work. But really, you can put together a zine whenever, and it could be as long or as short as you want. A zine is a personal project, and you can make it whatever you want it to be. It's true what everyone says about the importance of printing your images. Not only does it feel rewarding to hold, but you're also able to see your images in a new way. You notice things about light, shadows, and color that you've never noticed before when you only looked at things on a screen. You become more critical about details and composition, and so it really helps nurture your photographic eye. You're taking photos of real life, and so it makes sense to have the photos printed and held in real life. Hopefully you found some inspiration from this, and happy zine making!